This is Twit. Rob, start, stop talking about sci-fi and let's talk about the Raspberry Pi alternative. What? Which which one are we talking about this week? <laughs> so here on the Untitled Linux show, we are excited for our ARM feature and love the single board system on a chips. Systems on a chip? SOCs. Uh, you know, like the Raspberry Pi. And even though, you know, I believe ARM may be our feature, Sometimes it doesn't quite work out for for projects today that that need more power or the software you want to run isn't isn't available for ARM. Or maybe you want to be able to boot it from the free version of iVentoy. I've got just a thing for you for your next project and it's called Radza X4 spelled R A D X A. I don't know if that's really how you pronounce it but I'm going to be calling it Radza because I don't know how else you would say that. So the uh, Radza is a single board computer, just like the Raspberry Pi. But instead of ARM, it is powered by an Intel N100 CPU with an Intel UHD graphics, providing more power than the Raspberry Pi 5. Greater software compatibility at the cost of running a little bit hotter under load and more power cons- consumption. The price is comparable to, a, to the Pi 5 at, at a base price of $60, 60 US dollars, and available with a 4, 8, or 12 gigabit model was just announced. The CPU is a quad core max turbo frequency of 3.5 4 gigahertz. The UHD graphics ports DirectX 12.1, OpenGL 4.6, OpenCL 3.0, Intel QuickSync, and H264 slash 5 and AV1 decoding. A 40 pin GPO header, mostly compatible with the G with the uh, the Pi's GPIO. Dual micro HDMI 2.0 ports so you can have two monitors on it three usb3 ports one usb2 port uh an ethernet port onboard wi-fi and bluetooth and the courage to include a 3.5 millimeter audio combo jack there is no sd card slot on it like the uh raspberry pi but sd cards suck instead there's an m.2 PCIe 3 slot for for M.2 uh, SSD. And you can also optionally get eMMC storage pre-soldered for just $9 more. There's a few different uh, storage size options. The, the base model does not have eMMC on it. Unfortunately, like the Pi, this seems like it might be be a little difficult to get your hands on though a couple of models appear to be available at a race.tech and right right before the show i stumbled upon another new device powered with a, a sim- similar hardware that uh, i may talk about next week on our apparently the new hardware showcase corner or as i like to call it things jonathan should buy <laughs> <laughs> my wife complains about you every time she does the bills <laughs> like what is this 135 dot rob <laughs> <laughs> so you moved from uh distro hopping to hardware buying yeah you know flavor of the week i guess yeah <laughs> i have at least one more thing i mean that i i go where the the good stuff is and and right now it's just all kinds of interesting hardware coming out. So I've got to ask, how long does this thing work? How many microseconds will it will it uh, not burn itself out for if you don't put a heat sink on it? They do recommend a heat sink, and they do have a heat sink uh, available for $15. recommend <laughs> heat sink. <laughs> yeah, they they don't recommend not using one. Um, but uh, yeah, fifteen dollars for the heat sink um, for their provided one or their available one yeah yeah i sort of expect this thing to burst into flames without they might as well just add an extra 15 dollars to the price and include the heat sink uh yeah i mean this is for hobbyists you may want to make your own 
who knows what you want to do. It's a single bore computer. You might yeah, want to make right. water water you cooled. Do, you do want to make a more powerful heat sink than they're offering. Uh, and fan. I mean, it doesn't look too terrible, but I, I can't imagine an x86 machine not running hot, dangerously hot without a heat sink. It's one of the things that they managed to do on the Raspberry Pi. Like, yes, they'll get hot, but they can run safely without any sort of heat sink on them and still continue to run without crashing. Like they're really impressive. And I just, I don't, I don't see an X86 doing that really. Yeah. Well, the piece of hardware I might talk about next week, I'm kind of wondering where the heat sink fits into that. Cause mm-hmm. apparently it's the same N 100, um, Intel and well, all that stuff. According to Joey Snedden's article, it starts throttling at about 90 degrees centigrade. Yeah. Which is common for Intel. That's, that's pretty hot. Oh, I mean, right. actually, I, actually, I want to say Intel throttles around eighty normally. I can't remember. It it depends on the. Chip. It depends on the chip and what all it's doing. Yeah, some of them, some of them will handily hit a hundred, hundred plus C. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website twit.tv or subscribe in your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there.